Hello, refreshed tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play XCOM The Long War Base Assault with me, Blue Ankylo. Last episode, we started our base assault. We started off to a pretty solid start. We killed a couple mechtoids, outsiders, a commander, a ton of mutons. You can see their corpses littering the floor here from an amazing rocket. And we also killed a bunch of little sectoids, another sectoid commander. We got kind of surprised by a bunch of thin men, but they weren't really a big deal. Then I made a, a, a mistake, we can argue about how big or little it was in the comment section, and due to some very OP chrysalid action, we actually lost Sandless, but then I reloaded it because I feel like, basically, I let the game wear me out, and I wasn't thinking as straight as I should have been for such an important mission. And, uh, you know, that may be one of the difficulties on these large, longer missions that take two or three hours to win. If you don't take a break to stretch out and have a drink of water, or you try to rush through, um, it's very easy for something little to turn into something big on the mistake front. So I'm hoping to this episode I can keep my wits clear, and I'll play defensively and cautiously, and it will take a long time, but I want to do it without any deaths or any reloading or anything like that, so... That's the plan, and uh, I do wonder sometimes, as I mentioned a bit last episode, whether or not it's better to play loose and fast, and get things done, and then just reload if things go horrible by accident, or if it's better to go real slow and cautious and try to keep everyone alive under all circumstances. You know, people have different kinds of play styles, and people have different preferences for how they watch videos. I just, sometimes I worry on my videos that things are just going too slowly and that we're not making any progress. I, I don't know, but I wouldn't expect you guys would want to watch, you know, five hours of me just very, very slowly, like, you know, for instance, okay, we're going to go up these stairs. Alright, everyone overwatch. Alright, next turn. Okay, we're going to go up these stairs. Everyone overwatch. You know, um, that would be like the safest way to play, but... Um, what do you guys? It's going to be pretty long. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, if you saw last episode, you know what happened. Today, uh, we've basically got this spot safe, um, thanks to killing all those Seekers and all those Chrysalids. Uh, I don't know where the next pod is yet. We haven't had any sound pings, so we're just going to sort of slowly approach this little valley or death pits, whatever you like to call these things. And I wouldn't be surprised if, let's see, if I remember this layout, there's kind of a little upper level here, and then it goes back down for another death valley. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some aliens around here or on the bottom, but we'll see. We've already dealt with six pods. Mectoid, Muton, Sectoid, Thin Man, Chrysalid, Seeker. We've hit almost all of the easy enemies so far. And that six pods already in a base at maybe averaging six aliens per pod, that puts us at like 36 kills. I'd be surprised if we crack 50 of total aliens on a mission. So maybe two or three pods left, depending on our luck. Um, definitely you know, at least two more, maybe three more on the outside. I doubt there'll be four pods to still to go. So I feel like we've probably Keep killed on. significantly more than half the enemies. Maybe closer to two-thirds of the enemies. That kind of position. Moving out. That's my feeling. I could be wrong. There could be a hundred enemies on this wrong map, for all I know, but... Scanning. Actually, no, there can't. There is a... A floating giant seeker. <laughs> there is a cap to how many aliens can spawn on a single map. And I think it's 70 on vanilla, in, on normal. I think on the higher difficulties it does go up. I think it's 60 or 70 is the max number you can possibly see in uh, normal mode long war. You can correct me in the comments if you guys know the number better than I do, but maybe it's, maybe it's 60, maybe it's 70, maybe it's more, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's, that's my thinking. So, there would be a limit, but I still think in practice, I'm on my we're way. only going to get around 50 tops on a base assault. Unless something really weird happens. So, the mechs can move up to there. Looks like it should be safe to drop down. 
Again, these like alien food things are kind of lousy cover, as I explained last uh, on the last Moving. base mission way back a few episodes ago, because they get blown up so easily. But they do count as full cover for at least one shot. Uh, where's our sniper? Did I? Uh, can't remember where my sniper is. On my way. I'm thinking of keeping like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. Honestly, it doesn't matter. We haven't activated any aliens. We might as well just get everyone down here other than the sniper. Seeing as the sniper gets squad sight from up here. It doesn't really matter that we're getting sideways full cover. It, you know, I'm just getting people moved close enough that uh, they can react depending on um, okay. what we find out next turn, basically. If there's no aliens at the top, we can start moving closer. If there are aliens, we can pull back. Should be okay. Where is... My biggest question, though, is where my sniper is. Did I jump the sniper down by accident? Or did I just not paying good attention? We don't want to start the second half of this mission by paying horrible attention. Um, rockets. Medic. Infantry. I must have hopped him down already by accident. Yeah, there you go, Kent. See? Look at me not paying attention. Okay. We gotta stop that. <laughs> I should have left the sniper up here, cause squad sight would let him shoot onto the top there pretty easily, and nobody else would have had that ability. So that's that's not a good way. I've been too busy chit chatting with you guys. I gotta focus here. <laughs> Hopefully the game is uh, forgiving. <laughs> you know, Long War. It's known for its forgiveness, right? one tile too close and someone, your best soldier, gets killed instantly. <laughs> uh, and I mean, Sadless had... At the time, he had 14 HP. So the, the, the Chrysalid did 14 damage or more. I think I've seen a Chrysalid attack a mech for like 30 damage in one shot. So they can do a lot of damage. Um, let's find out okay. what's up here. We didn't get any sound pings. So there may not be anything. Seems like maybe nothing it is. I mean, on the logic of there shouldn't be very many pods left, that means we should be able to move in towards the last room relatively quickly. Um, I just, I, I obviously needed to take a break last episode and uh, refocus my thoughts because I was making silly, stupid mistakes and I didn't want to have to resort to horrible reloading because I'm just being stupid, so... You know, I, I feel like cutting the video up was probably in the best bet, even if we were more than halfway done, basically. Whether or not that will turn out to be true, you know, we'll see. We'll find out this episode, I mean, that's that's the way. Well, my thinking here is uh, keeping people out of sight this turn, and then moving them up to this line next turn on the top of the hill. So they can move up and overwatch or shoot, depending on what happens. And, uh, you know, that's generally a good idea. It is still a little different having ten soldiers active at once. I am quite used to just having eight nowadays, because that's what you normally get on long watch. And having two extra just makes my positioning a little bit... It's like, wow, I don't know where I'm going to put everybody. It's just so many troops. Oh, look! All this time, there really was a Seeker hiding out. I thought there might have been one more. It's, 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 it's dead, guys. Chill. <laughs> That's funny. That one took a long time to uh, decloak. Alright. Let's move people up to the half cover high ground. Not the front of the high ground, just the back of it. Once everyone's up here safely... We will um, probably move the mechs forward on the next turn and see if we pop anything else over there. Solid I'm copy. thinking of leaving like one square between each person so they can move left or right to shoot. Just so they get a little bit better on the angles. Although um, there's not quite enough squares for that maybe. I can put someone over Look here. Maybe if I use the corners, there would be more spots. But I feel like the corners are bad spots anyway, because it's even harder to get a good angle from over here. Well, I mean, it's just harder to reposition and get a shot. Like, 
if I put people way in the corner and the aliens came up over here, they'd have a harder time getting an angle on them the way I see it. Ah, whatever. Let's not stress about it too much. I don't think it'll make much difference. And uh, you can just dash over here. It's symmetrical. It's as good as I can hope for, right? <laughs> Most people have at least... I think everyone has at least one square they can move and shoot into. Rather than being totally boxed in. So, there we go. So are we going to find a big load of exalt just over this edge? On the move. Kind of feel like maybe. Nope. Well, we're making lots of forward progress. I, uh... I'm getting the feeling that whatever pods are left are definitely all going to be squished together in the final room. The way this is going. Because... I mean, so far, I mean, I apologize, this episode has been rather uh, action short and it's been 10 minutes of me just babbling away, trying to be somewhat entertaining and uh, waiting oh, yeah, for the I aliens to show up. <laughs> oh well, it's all good, guys. Position Base confirmed. assaults are stressful enough. I can use a little bit of relaxing, uh, yes, easy mode kind of stuff. Easier mode. Sniper up here, I guess. I don't know. This is a really good spot for a sniper. Um, this corridor, if we can spawn an enemy, or if we can get enemies to uh, follow us into this corridor, this is a great shooting alley. Very, very solid. So, uh, we'll see what happens. There's not much cover down there. These things blow up easy, and then that's it. There's nothing else, so... We did finally hear a sound ping. This could be an opportunity to use a uh, battle scanner, because we're almost at the end and I don't think I've used... No, I used one. Right? Battle scanner? Yeah, I used one on the Seekers, that's right. But uh, this is the last room over here, so we only have one more doorway. And I'm going to be betting that there's enemies behind it, actually. We'll find out right here, Moving to position. if they're in front or behind the door. Okay, they're behind the door. So, that's fine. Because they're behind the door, that means I can set up a proper breach. And I can actually leave a couple people, maybe the sniper here. A couple people behind these. Behind, even from this edge. Because they won't be flanked because of the, the, the door breach idea. And all the mechs up close and ready. So, I think that'll work just fine. It'll take a couple turns to get into position. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Whatever. No one's activated. I think it's pretty unlikely that there are patrols now. Any patrols on the base mission are probably... Um, I'm not going to dash all the way up, though. That's a bit much. I'm on the move. <laughs> Scouts are too quick for their own good sometimes. Also, I mean, I might as well reload people while I'm thinking about this. It, yeah, in fact, reloading would be the, the smart ankylo. Position. Let's be smart ankylos, right? We're green to go. The ammo conservation means, you know, we get a couple extra shots. Um, well, I think it generally adds plus one ammo to anyone's clip. And sometimes it adds, like, a weird percent as well, but... Because you can see people that can't shoot but still have a little bit of ammo left. Which might mean that they could do an extra flush or suppress or something. I don't know for sure, but... It's just a little bit weird. It doesn't always line up smoothly. Especially if you give them lock and load lock as well as ammo conservation. Reload but, complete. And the mechs obviously get a ton of shots nowadays. So we just keep moving forward. Try not to be too uh, crazy, basically. Don't want to risk anyone's life. Sandless already got one freebie. We don't want to have to do that again, obviously. I just, I can't, you know, we've got too much history together, Sandless and I. You know, I, I can't just let him be murdered by a chrysalid just for no good reason like if he must die it has to be for something like worthwhile like the final mission or something if somebody dies on the final mission that's affirmative to succeed at the end that's you know giving your life for a good reason or i don't know maybe if someone was mind controlled and sandless you know rushed forward to save them and cost him his life but he managed to kill the ethereal or something yeah you know that's the kind of thing officers would do right but uh not for nothing not for just nothing <laughs> uh, 
That's that's no not good enough. Alright, I would like the infantry on the doorway. Sandless, you run to the front. And Commander, you need to be close enough to toss a grenade if needed, or maybe stun an enemy, you never know. Uh, scout. Assault. I'll put the assault here so they're close enough to run in and shoot, but I'd rather have the double shots on the doorway, because they get the best line of sight curving around the doorway. So a double tap plus a light em up I think is the best uh I'm watching. plus a, a, a light em up again I'm actually watch. I think is the best option. And then uh on my way. So it's not actually symmetrical, unfortunately. <laughs> we got the sniper in the middle okay. and that throws off our balance, but it's almost symmetrical. <laughs> I should have put the sniper over there just to make it symmetrical. <laughs> Alright, I feel like this is a pretty good breach setup. I'm not going to spend more time steadying weapons, because... Well, you should, but... Eh, time is valuable. Time is money. Oh, good. We got... There's our exalt. Elite exalt. And a muton party. So we found a lot of aliens, to be honest. <laughs> I hope we can actually fight this off from our position. Uh, I wish I had one more smoke grenade, actually. This would be a decent time to smoke the front. The sniper can only shoot that muton. The, the guy in the middle is dead. Um, can't see anything from there. Flanagan's pretty solid. Uh, we also could... I mean, one of the ways we could do this is we'd have both the mechs run in and flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> that would be exciting. Um, we're going to take a lot of shots next turn. Unless I kill a lot of these guys. Actually, you know, the real danger here is everything has a grenade. <laughs> these uh, are operatives that get grenades. So, this, this may not work out so well. Um, I want to close the door. <laughs> Well, let's just do as much damage as we can. Um, I wish Krasikov had better aim than he actually has. Try to take that guy out. You applied hollow targeting, so that's great. Then maybe apply hollow targeting to the other one. We're off to a real good start here, guys. Real good start. Alright, Sandless, you need to kill a couple of these mutants. There's just too many aliens for us to ignore, basically. There you go. Okay, Sandless, you know what it means to be... You know how to handle these important situations. Alright, Reaper, you're also basically infantry. You know what it means on a important turn, right? <laughs> and another shot here. I think we try to take out the Muton before the uh, Exalt. I don't know if the Exalt are stronger than Mutons or not, like aim-wise, it's hard to say. Uh, how about our Assault? Oh, you could mine for it! Yeah, that was, that's fine. That'll mess that guy up reasonably. I didn't need to shoot him twice if I just mine freight him, but that's okay. Just starting. If we get grenaded to smithereens, I'm gonna be kinda mad, but I guess it's okay. I could've Shredder Rocketed too. Not a great Shredder Rocket. 60%. That's a different one entirely. I don't know who the most important one to shoot is. That guy's pretty close, but we got 70% on these guys. I suppose we take the 70% shot here. And we miss. It's only approximately 2 and 3 odds, so it's not the... It's not that unusual that you'd miss those. Alright, let the sniper take a shot on this guy. It's your only shot. It's kind of why I was saving this guy. Maybe you should have taken the sniper shot earlier, but... We definitely hurt him. Maybe... 35. Oh, 60 here. Even though he's mine frayed, I think this is a much better shot. And you got the kill. Oh well. The mine fray may not have mattered much, but... Maybe we can get this kill too, and it's all good, really. 
nice try. 50%? Sure, why not? <laughs> you never know. And then the medic. I sure wish I'd brought more smoke. Once we get tactical rigging, I will probably bring medics with two med kits and a spare smoke grenade for these kind of missions. I just, uh... Well, I didn't have it. Nothing to worry about psionics, so we can just overwatch, I guess. Well, we killed... A l oh, he has a rocket launcher. I didn't know they had heavies. That's so You killed your friend. I don't know how much damage we took. I don't think they can destroy that cover. Wow, another rocket. That is just bull. It's not doing a lot of damage, but it's starting to tick me off. If all I get is rockets and grenades... Alright, two damage is fine. Yeah, you know what we need now? We need some restorative mist. <laughs> you know that thing we haven't built yet? Yeah, this would be a good time for it. Alright, well that wasn't too bad. They used their rockets. We took some damage. If you shoot another rocket, I'm going to be pretty mad. Alright, nobody died. I'm all right. We definitely took a lot of damage, though. That's it, right? Killed all the mutons now? It's just elite exalt forces? Alright, so. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> um. Well. I think we want to move the medic here. Heal Sandless for sure. Yes, Cannot afford to lose our buddy. So this, this deals with Sandless. I don't think we can heal the mech from here. We could move the mech over one square and heal. You'll lose your platform stability bonus, but you don't really need to be healed, to be honest. I think we just focus on killing these guys. Could we just run up there and flame them? Not really. Uh, I'm a little bit more worried about Krasikov, because he's not getting healed and he's pretty low. Um, that's not going to do anything. Sniper? Okay, they managed to blow open the shot for the sniper, though. That was their own mistake. So, the mechs are fine. I think Reaper shoots at each of these once and applies hollow targeting at, or kills them if he gets lucky. And then other people try to finish them off. Target still in play. It'd be nice if you hit one of them. Alright, there you go. I mean, it was a 74% shot. If you missed two 74s, that would be... That would feel rather unlucky to me. Alright, and finish this guy off maybe, Kent? That was an 88% miss. We love those. Oh, this cover is gone. Gotta remember that. Alright, uh... Sandless is at full HP. He's not worried anymore. Also, I think... The elites, I don't think they get two bye rockets. Bye. Can we see, like, the elite operative? That's the only one you can see. I guess you might as well shoot. Well, Sandless is just murdering spree, man. He killed four aliens in two turns. That's insane. Um, did I kill all the rocket guys already? The heavies? Oh, well, we'll go for the kill here. Alright, we killed three elites there. That was pretty good. I'm a little bit worried about leaving um, leaving uh, Krasikov up here. But I'm becoming more and more confident in our ability to just kill the rest of these guys. Unless we get unlucky. I mean, that maybe is a little lucky, but we've already missed a couple 70%. We can't miss all the 70 and 80% shots on a single turn. Kittens. Commander. Is there really just the one guy left? If he's the last one left, I could consider run and gun. Although it might trigger another wave, to be honest. Can move up, maybe yeah, flash him? Now. Seeing as this flank had to move it. Hank had to move anyway. Flank and again. Of course you can't flank him. Or, uh, you can't, uh, Moving flash him. Overwatch. Well, you know what? Let's inspire. We took a lot of damage last turn. Let's have a little huddle. Everyone, uh, don't worry. You'll be fine. And, uh... Yeah, you should go watch if you want. Sure. 
Hey, look at that. Reaper auto repairs. That's handy. So he takes a shot at Reaper. He just repaired two damage. That's not going to be enough. And I think if the, another Seeker. Wow, these Seekers have been hiding for a long time. <laughs> this is from like last episode. They're still slowly popping in. That's crazy. Finally went for a sniper, eh? I don't think it's fair how long these guys have waited for us, to be honest. And of course we can't see them because, you know, reasons. Anyway, that should deal with it. Are you kidding me? One damage this late in the game? We need new weapons. These laser carbines are garbage. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna run and gun back here. Uh, we already have someone flanked this side anyway. If the aliens or the exalt fall, push forward, we're flanked anyway. We might as well make sure we kill this thing. There you go, flaming panda. Alright, let's kill this guy. Alright, Reaper, come on, buddy. It's time to kill the last exalt. No Alright, nine damage. That's acceptable. Weapons are dry. Sandless needs to reload. Um, Kilifron. What we're gonna do is medicate Kilifron a little bit. And then we can use the paramedic skill to move out of the way. We'll heal Krasikov next turn. I might do the next mech heal with the engineer, to be honest. That's and Kilifron's gonna kill uh, Exalt. There, don't you miss. There you go, buddy. Good shot. Okay, pretty solid. Out of the game. So I think there's probably nothing left from the exalt, but I could be wrong. Ready to rock. I'm not gonna move anyone like out of cover completely yet. Um, well, it's not actually no, it's fine because I could move you to here. Oh shoot, no, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking our engineer could heal <laughs> Krasikov. No, 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 that's the wrong way. Forget that. Um, if Reaper could move, then that would he could move over and get healed, but Roger, can't do that. <laughs> Next turn, we'll heal the rest of the squad. Forgot the order there a little bit. Oops. Don't worry. I'm okay. I haven't lost my mind totally yet. You notice we haven't had to reload this episode either so far? <laughs> That's important to know, right? So we did survive a bit of rocket spam, and I'm pretty happy about that. We definitely took some damage, but we have enough uh, repairs left that it's not too scary. We haven't used a lot of our flames yet either. We still have some consumables ready to go. We used a lot of rockets, but we still got a spare. This is our first arc thrower charge. And that puts our mechs at basically full HP. Make sure everyone's reloaded. Ready to engage hostile targets. And then we'll push forward to what I expect is the final push of this map. 30 minutes in, we might finish this before an hour's up. Amazing. Wouldn't that be amazing? Less than an hour long for an episode. Alright, I get you. There's a giant thing there. Got it covered. Ha! Alright, just gotta keep my cool. One more room. Probably the sectoid commander. You hear that? Not terribly worried about catching anything, obviously. It'd be a Heading nice bonus, but there's no need to stress about it. Got that alien entertainment that's worth tons of cash to sell. It's always good fun. Heading there now. I think we're not gonna really worry about moving into this room yet. Just a couple people Our that primitive. take a little bit of cover. We'll move up to the next the next section next turn. Everyone's basically at full health or close enough. Got it covered. Okay. Move our now. assault up closer. We haven't done a whole lot of assaulting so far. It is because if you run forward Got you tend to down. activate more aliens. Um, assault are definitely more of a gamble in Long Got War it. than they are in like vanilla I would Roger. say. That's one of the reasons why I like mid-range infantry so much. It's because uh, 
You're not at risk of popping aliens if you're standing still just shooting them. If you're running close to get that assault kill, you may be running into yet another pod, and uh, that might be the straw that breaks the camel's back in, in that sense where you pop eight Muton Elites or something, whatever, whatever is difficult for whatever phase of the game you're in, and uh, cause a wipe even at worst, maybe even just if someone dies, but, you know, a few Chrysalids could really ruin your day early on. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, the different entryway from the last one, like, the last time we did That's the base assault, we had a different map, so this is a little bit different. I actually like this one more. I think on this map it's easier to set up um, a shot down onto the uh, commanding location. The uh, it's not like a bridge in a base, but whatever you want to call the uh, the final location aye, aye, is. Commander. I just feel like Overwatch. this map aye, aye. is a lot easier to uh, get the high ground on, basically, and really. I mean, the other map's not too bad either, but this one I feel like you can get a better high ground on flank. Overwatch. And unless the aliens have uh, the ability to fly or jump up like chrysalids and thin men, um, they can't even really get you. Of course, uh, you know, some aliens can fly. <laughs> and some of them can jump, but it's okay. Ha ah, la 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 la. So no aliens popped as far as we know. We can heck is that? Oh, there was one exalt that ran away. Does our sniper have a sight? No, of course not. That would be way too much to ask for. Maybe from there, but I doubt it. It's funny how the game, like, it's like it knows what I'm saying, and every time I say, like, ah, you know, this move, ah, oh, you know, there's no way there's anything left, we're safe to move out, it just has to spit it back in my face. It's like a rule. And we'll do a little bit of psionic training just for fun. You gotta use your psionic abilities quite a lot before you can get second tier and third tier. Well, oh, we did get an overwatch on him. Maybe he'll just die here after all. Good shot, Flanagan. You didn't kill him, but, you know, you hit. That's half the battle, just hitting. Okay. <laughs> I'm... Not going to say anything else for the rest of this episode. <laughs> Nothing is going to surprise me. Position Maybe Flanagan can finish off that exile. It's in cover, but we've got such a height advantage. Cover barely counts once you're so high above it. Um... I don't know if you'll get line of sight, but you might from right here. Not quite, hey? That would have been a cool shot. Let's try from here. Yeah, you got line of sight. 84%, he's probably dead. There you go, good work. Oh, that was it! Well, we did get over 50, which is approximately my guess, although I thought it would be less than 50. I thought there'd be one more pod left at the end, but, uh... Okay, so this episode, or this half of the mission, was actually the vastly easier. We only had one real encounter with two pods, and that was it. So, you know, not bad, not bad. Only really, in my opinion, on that episode, or this mission, I made really two mistakes. I popped the Thin Men unsafely, but we handled it, and then I popped the Chrysalids unsafely, and we did not handle it. So, um, you know, two mistakes out of a real long mission like that, not the worst. There may have been some other minor ones, but uh, those were the two that I really thought I should have done differently. So, Krasikov, welcome to being a gunnery sergeant. You get... I don't think bring them on is very good for gunners. Gunners don't have very high base crits, um, really at all. Um, even with pulse weapons, we're going to barely crack 10 or 15 percent. Resilience gets you a ton of aim and will, which is also very, very handy. And then you can't be critted yourself. And then will to survive. I would say resilience is probably better than will to survive. 
bring them on isn't bad. It's good for crit builds. And you'll still get crits on flanked enemies sometimes. But remember, my idea with gunners is the next tier of weapons, I'm going to give them the kind of guns that they can't move and shoot. So it's harder for them to flank enemies. They're not really a flanker like a scout or an assault. Um, or a lot of our mechs are, especially. They're going to be relatively low mobility, although Krasikov's pretty high, comparatively to most. Um, and I think Resilience is the best choice. Plus, you're one of my higher ranking soldiers, I'd rather keep you alive. That's part of my thinking. Aim and will, pretty solid. Flaming Panda. Now, on the other hand, Assault do live on the crits. Um, and plus one damage per enemy could make a crit really, really high. I think, by default, every crit will do plus one damage because you can see the guy you're shooting. And it's very common to have more than one. In fact, having five enemies on the field is not uncommon at all. Um, I feel like Killer Instinct plus Bring em On would have been a better, uh, com a better synergy. We got Aggression at least. Probably Aggression, Close Encounter, Killer Instinct, and Bring em On. On the other hand, Sprinter is an amazing ability. And yes, I'm basically ignoring Packmaster because Assault don't bring a lot of items. Why would you bring Packmaster on Assault? I don't really know. Maybe you just want some spare flashbangs or something, but they're not, in my in my eyes, they're not really specced for item use. You're also ready to be promoted psionically. I think we just go, I mean, the willpower will help you out with psionics, it's true, but Sprinter is just so good. I, I, I'm hard pressed to say what ability is better than Sprinter. Light him up, if it was on the same tier as Sprinter, would be a difficult decision. Um, unless you're like a rocketeer who needs like a rocket upgrade like uh, Mayhem or uh, Javelin rockets or something, maybe that would beat Sprinter on a rocketeer, but most of the time, almost anything is not as good as Sprinter. So, Sprinter it is. Especially for an assault. Um, and then this rocketeer. Now, nah, we finally got uh, a gunnery rocketeer. This is one of my most difficult decisions on uh, the entire game for tiers, as far as I'm concerned. Danger zone, first. Larger area for your rocket's explosions. Easier to hit more. Um, you can hit more enemies with shredding rocket. Easier. From a longer range by a little bit. Um, you can do a lot more damage because you can center the center of the blast. I think... Because the overall area increases, it actually means if you pick the center point and then count like how many squares from the middle you're out, say you were two tiles from the middle normally, I think after you get danger zone, because it's got such a larger radius, I bet you the damage scales because the outside still has to do some damage. Two tiles from the center on a danger zone rocket will actually do slightly more like half a damage or one damage more than a normal one would. I, I could be wrong, you know, correct me if you know how it works better, but in my eyes, this will mean the center, larger section of the rocket is more to do, more likely to do max damage. More area will get max damage. And then it's easier to hit lots of enemies under the outer damage. That's kind of what I'm thinking. On the other hand, Mayhem straight up adds plus one, two, or three. I don't know how it works in Long War, but in Vanilla, it's plus one damage per weapon tier. And I don't know how that applies to rockets either, to be honest. But for like normal weapons, like marksman's rifles and strike rifles, it would be, I think in, in vanilla it would be, well, vanilla would just be like whatever the other rifles are called for vanilla. Um, but it would be plus one at first tier if you got mayhem, plus two at beams, and plus three with plasma. Now, Long War has five tiers, with uh, Gauss and Pulse added in. And I'm not sure if it gives you plus five at Plasma. I kind of doubt it. It's probably still plus three, but you get plus one at, at Ballistic, plus two at Gauss and Laser, let's say, and then plus three at Plasma or something. Something like that is my guess. But, you know, straight up damage is good. Or longer range. You can now shoot out of your vision. That's pretty awesome too, um, because then you can leave your Rocketeer back with your Sniper, or at least pretty close, 
totally safe, very low mobility. You can just carry around a ton of rockets and just shoot them across the map. I don't know which one's the best, basically. I think they're all really good, and I would love it if they could be split across the last three levels. <laughs> so you could just get them all. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Javelin plus Danger Zone especially, and then Mayhem for damage. Oh, that'd be beautiful, guys. But, um... I think the way I use my rockets, I like my Rocketeers to still have a shot. And they're not going to get Squad Sight, so they're not going to be able to use their primary if I take Javelin. Javelin is great, but I don't think that's how I'm going to use Rocketeers. Damage or AoE? Well, the main point of Rocketeers for me, most of the time, is to apply shredding ammo to the largest group of aliens possible. Normally, a normal rocket is big enough. But I think Danger Zone just makes it easier to land those shots. Or if I'm using a normal rocket, this will really destroy all the cover anywhere near the aliens. So that's what we're going to go with. We're not so worried about damage. It's about destroying cover and applying shredding effects. So that's why I pick it. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I like getting these high level, high tier soldiers. So much better. So we got a spare hyperwave beacon. We got... Not as much Illyrium as we got last time, sadly. But lots of alloys, good weapons. Oh, the meld, the meld. The sweet, juicy meld. We can upgrade our other mech now, for sure. Or build one Firestorm. <laughs> we'll sell the entertainment and the food. We might have enough surgeries for a uh, another foundry project. And, be in touch, also, Kinder. something to keep in mind, we've recovered South Africa. And, yes, they keep their shield defense that they had before they left. The UK must have left before they got any defenses, but South Africa left with a little bit, so they got it back when we recovered them. The map is still looking a little yellow and orange, but it's getting much better. Uh, do I feel like trading off anything? No, we're not giving up our Illyrium. I'm not giving up my Seekers. So let's sell, 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 sell what we can. I'm pretty happy with that mission, to be honest. It wasn't the best, but I feel like we did a good go job. A wild goose chase. We need 12 surgeries and 12 stasis tanks, as we learned before. So we sell that. I know we can use alien entertainment for panic reduction. I want the money. Give me the money. And is there anything else that we can sell? We could sell one hyperwave beacon, but whatever. Unless I'm short $2, I'm not going to bother. And that's probably all we can sell right now. Other than maybe some corpses. Lots of weapon fragments, lots of alloys. Unfortunately, we're switching over to needing Illyrium now. It's just the way the game goes at this phase. Yeah, I think that's it. We got some good money. I mean, heck. If we made around $500 from one base assault, I'm not gonna argue, I'm not gonna complain. So, foundry projects. I love the foundry. Tactical rigging. Pretty important. Pretty useful. I think we're going to do advanced surgery first. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much faster, but we've had some problems with people being wounded for like months at a time. And this will cut it down by maybe 50%, maybe 25 I think it's worth it. And from here on out, we can just sell stasis and surgeries for money. You know, it's fine. So spend that money there. Is there any other... Is there any other foundry projects I really want to do at the moment? I'm not spending our meld on this, sorry. It's not a bad upgrade, but I can't afford it. This is still way too much meld, and we don't really need alloys as much anymore. Now we're focused on Illyrium and meld primarily, and I need the meld, so I'm not going to give that up. Tactical rigging would cost us every last penny that we have left, but it is also really good. Um... I'm thinking. Or we could start building more pulse weapons. What's more important? A spare item slot or better weapons? Probably better weapons and better armor. Um, yeah, the I think so. Is already let's try to, f let's try to finish up enough pulse weapons for a full squad. We've got shotgun, sniper, gunner. We need... I'd like to have six weapons at least all together. So I need two rifles and a carbine. The carbine's for the uh, Rocketeer. So if I can afford that, I think I... I might not have enough credits, but I think I've got enough uh, Illyrium. Then we'll have 
six pulse tier weapons. Not enough for a full eight for the next base assault, but we could buy a couple more rifles eventually. Um, pulse rifle, what do you guys take? 15 Illyrium, yeah. We're going to start two of these. I probably, I don't think I'm going to have enough credits for the carbine, which was up here. Pulse carbine, 109. Do you think I could afford... Can I sell $43 of stuff? What could I sell for $43? Um, I still have the meld that I haven't touched yet. I might start uh, augmenting two more soldiers, the, the, the medic and the gunner. Or I might save it to upgrade my second mech to tier 2, I think might be the best idea. Um, what could I sell... I can... I was thinking about selling the laser weapons, but I think I want to save those for the, the recruiting, the training missions. Probably. I think we can make enough money selling some corpses that we don't use too much of. That's almost enough just from sectoids. I keep the floaters for aim modules. I think they're aim modules, right? We keep the muton elites. We sell some berserkers because we don't really need them for much. And that will give us enough money with just selling that. Alright. I mean, strictly speaking, if I can sell enough, I could start one more pulse rifle, but I don't think I need it. This is like the minimum number of pulse weapons to do what I want to do. Assault, gunner, sniper, infantry, medic, rocketeer. Something like that. And then two mechs to cover the rest. I'll probably want to build two more pulse weapons, probably two more rifles, to be honest. Eventually. Um, let's, uh, let's let a few days go by. I'd like to see those super capacitors for the next air assault, if possible. But we're probably going to get a mission before that happens. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to happen. This was, I was just, <laughs> I'm like psychic. Okay, we'll use the laser cannon. We're not going to use the phoenix coil gun on a scout. This should be a relatively easy battle. And we might get a mission on it for training some rookies. You, know. strike range. you could probably save scum, reload, and reload until you got what you wanted. If you wanted the $100, you could just redo it until you got the $100. If you wanted the mission, you could just do it until you got the mission. I'm definitely not doing that, though. Don't worry about that. So, I mean, now that we've got that money, I mean, uh, turns out that maybe starting another rifle is not a bad idea. If we have enough. Just to make it easier to equip the full... How much am I short? I'm short $4. Okay, we can we can handle $4, right? Um, I don't really need all the laser... One thing I was looking for, there doesn't seem to be any pulse pistol tier. Um, not that's light. There are pulse secondaries that are like pistols, but they're like... Uh, they always subtract from your mobility. So we're going to stick with laser pistols. We don't really use sidearms very much. Once we get plasma, we might go to plasma pistols. But uh, there just isn't a light version of Pulse or Goss. So, in case you're wondering. I wonder if it was all worth it. For the aliens, I mean. Alright, engineering, bye. I feel like three Pulse rifles will be mostly enough until we do a base assault. After this, we may start focusing on armor. Probably should. So how much are we going to need? We're going to need more Illyrium to do the next mech suit. We're going to want Aegis armor. Uh, we're going to want some Aurora armor. I might... Yeah, this might be the next thing we buy. Maybe like one or two suits of Aurora armor for our psionics to help them train up a little bit easier. Not that we've had a huge problem, but it's not bad. Mectoid cores. We no longer need spares. We've already done the servo motors, so that's fine. Scientist engineer. I hate you, Exalt. I forgot about them. This should be right when we shot down the small. <laughs> Or right after we shot down the small? When when are we? I don't know. Did I? This must have been right before the exalt sabotaged us. I 
I forgot about them completely. I know I scanned for them at the beginning of the month, and we didn't get anything. So now I have to scan for them again. It's still going to cost me like 75 bucks, and I don't have anything. Ah! Well, it's reload and pay 75 or lose like 400 That is garbage. Um, how am I going to make $75 right now? Uh... We don't use these for... M well, actually, you do. Sectoid commander corpses are used for some of the Psy Shield stuff that I haven't gotten around to building. Heavy floaters, maybe not in anything. Thin men, we don't need for anything, as far as I know. Other than missions, mission requests. And then we just need four dollars. We'll sell one muton there. We're really scraping the bottle of the barrel here. All right. Negative. Hopefully this is like the final time. Exalt mission. If it eliminates France, we know it's in Russia. If it eliminates Russia, we know it's in France. If it eliminates US, it sucks. Intel scan complete. All right. Exalt cell location confirmed. I don't know if it matters which one we do, because there's two right now. You can only do one. I feel like doing the one in Argentina might help their panic, whereas United States doesn't make any difference because they're already an alien base. Hopefully we've got a scout that's able to go. I did totally forget about Exalt. I see in my side campaign, by the time I started doing alien bases, Stop I'd already taken out the out Exalt there. HQ. So I hadn't thought of that. Um, now that we're doing base assaults, I'm like, yeah, we're doing awesome. Oh yeah, there's still Exalt. Right. So sorry guys. I feel like that four hundred dollars is worth that. Anyway, we've got Monkey Mark, who is our traditional uh our traditional anti-exalt mission guy, girl, and honestly, don't even bring a flashbang. I'll give you a laser pistol, but other than that, your only chance of surviving is an easy mission where you run away. Covert operator right. deployed to disrupt. I'm not happy about that. That was a mistake that I forgot about. Eh, small mistake, cost you a lot of money. Aircraft transfer no complete. Detected. A very large. Well, I know what this is. Well, there's two things this could be. <laughs> One is a terror mission, the other is worse. We're gonna... It actually is probably... It's probably a terror mission from what I saw. But we're gonna make a new save just in case. And we're gonna see what happens. Where is it going? Well, also, you might be able to tell what it is if you send a, a ship after it. Let's see... Enemy is padlocked. It doesn't look like the other thing. Approaching target that's now. a that's a big one, Pursuing. guys. You don't want to fight those with normal interceptors. Can I uh carefully watch what it's doing? Alright, it's just a terror ship. Everyone relax. It's only terror. <laughs> now, someone has told me there's a fun strategy where you just ignore it, the aliens get a base instantly, you lose your satellite. You build another satellite, or another skeleton key, launch your new satellite, and you get a base mission right away, and you get all that meld. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I just did a base assault. I don't have any skeleton keys ready, although I should start another one pretty soon, I suppose. Um, we'll just do the terror mission, and we'll try to save uh, the Europe. Um, if we lose a European country due to bad pa terror mission skills... That's fine, but uh, we gotta we gotta get the alien base number down. I'm not gonna give them a free base right now until we're like, basically, if we get rid of all the bases, then I might let them get one so we can get more mels. Until then, no way. Anyway, that's all for now. I need a break, and uh, next episode we get some terror, terror from the deep. Except we're still a week away from pulse weapons. At least by the end of December. We'll have super capacitors and pulse weapons. That's just, that's something, right? That's something. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you didn't mind my reload there for Exalt's garbage. We're going to have an Ex Exalt HQ mission before long, too. And then they're done. They're finally done. And then I really can forget about them. So, see you guys next time. Hope you've enjoyed. <laughs>